Hi everybody, it's Mr. Bob again and time for another book. This one is called Arthur's Tooth by Mark Brown. Now it's perhaps a book that you've read in class or had your teacher read to you, but either way, um, I think you'll enjoy this book. And Mr. Bob has a special announcement at the end of the video. So make sure you watch the video all the way through for the special announcement at the end. This is Arthur's Tooth by Mark Brown. Finally, Arthur had a loose tooth. He wiggled it with his tongue. He wiggled it with his finger. He wiggled it all the time. One afternoon, while Arthur was wiggling his tooth during math, he heard a loud scream. Francine jumped up. My tooth just fell out on my desk, she cried. Class, how many of you have lost a tooth? asked Mr. Marco. Everyone but Arthur raised their hands. When Arthur got home, he didn't want any milk and cookies. What's the matter, Arthur? his mother asked. I'm the only one in my class who still has all his baby teeth, he complained. Don't worry, said his sister, E.W. Before you know it, all your teeth will fall out, and you can get false teeth like Grandma Thora. Arthur persuaded Father to make a special dinner for him. Steak, corn on the cob, and peanut brittle. I can't believe one little tooth can take so long to fall out, said Father. The next day, Muffy brought in a whole jar of her teeth for show and tell. I got two dollars for each one, she said. One for my dad and one for my mom. I put it all in the bank to earn interest. I'm waiting for my investment to double. Not me, said Francine. I'm spending mine. Later, class saw a movie called Nasty Mr. Tooth Decay. Between the ages of four and seven, the announcer began, everyone begins to lose their deciduous or baby teeth. Everyone except Arthur, shouted Francine. The whole class laughed. Arthur slid down in his seat. He wiggled his tooth as hard as he could. In the cafeteria, Francine practiced her new tricks. Look, she said, I can keep my teeth closed and still drink through a straw. I can squirt water too. Everybody line up for a squirting contest. Everybody except Arthur. Babies with baby teeth can't squirt water. By the next day, Arthur was convinced his loose tooth would never fall out. His friends tried to help. Buster brought carrots for Arthur's lunch. Sue Ellen showed Arthur how to put raisins over his teeth to make it look as if some were missing. The brain invented a special machine. It's a tooth remover, he explained. Just put your head in here. Even Binky Barnes wanted to help. I can knock that tooth out one second flat, he said. That night, Arthur spent a lot of time in front of the bathroom mirror. He got up very early the next morning to wiggle at his tooth again. See how much looser it is, he told his parents. That's it, said his mother. You need professional help. You're going to the dentist today. Going to the dentist, asked Francine. Boy, do I feel sorry for you. There were other patients waiting to see Dr. Sozio. Sorry, said the nurse. We're running late. Have a seat. Arthur? You were smart to bring a book, said Mother. Finally, it was Arthur's turn. I wish all my patients were as good at waiting as you are, said Dr. Sozio. How old are you now, Arthur? Seven, said Arthur. I still have all my baby teeth. I was eight before I lost my first tooth, said Dr. Sozio. Everyone is different. Really, said Arthur? Dr. Sozio examined Arthur's loose tooth. This one should fall out very soon, he said. Just wait. Arthur got back to school just in time for recess. Still have all your baby teeth, Francine asked. Then you can't be in the game. I'm the Tooth Fairy. Only people who have lost teeth can play. If you're the Tooth Fairy, said Arthur, I think I'll keep all my teeth. I can wait. He started over to the softball game. Whoever I touch, said Francine, loses a tooth. She flapped her arms. The one who loses the most wins. Francine twirled around and touched Buster. She twirled faster and touched Sue Ellen. Twirling even faster, she slipped and hit Arthur. Sorry, Arthur, Francine said, but I told you, no babies allowed. Arthur picked up his glasses. It's Ogie Kay, he said. It's probably the nicest thing you've ever done for me. What do you mean? asked Francine. Arthur just smiled. Well, wasn't that a good book? I like that book. 
And it's an important lesson to remember that our bodies are all made differently and we grow at different rates and our teeth come out at different rates. We're not babies if it takes longer than other people and we're not more grown up. That's just the way our bodies are made. Now Mr. Bob said he had a special announcement after the video and I do. That is all the teachers and staff at Colonel Wright School are going to parade in the neighborhood around Colonel Wright School. We might even get to come by your house to wave hi. Make sure you get outside at 10 o'clock, um, even if you have to wear your jammies. Although, probably it'd be better if you just had your regular clothes on, I think. Mr. Bob's going to have his regular clothes on. I don't like to wear my jammies too much. Anyway, hope to see you then. We miss you greatly, and I can't wait to see you Wednesday on May 20th at 10 o'clock in the morning. This is Mr. Bob. Oh, by the way, it's 10 o'clock when we're going to start. So, if it's a parade, it might take longer to get to your house than if when we first start. So don't get impatient if it takes until maybe 10.30 or even 11 o'clock to get to your house because we're going to go all through the neighborhoods to make sure we try to get as many people as we can. So I can't wait to see you and we will see you then. Bye-bye.